Blessed are you, holy and living one. You are come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Though in the form of God, Christ Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself, even became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, fill us with compassion and respect for all people, and empower us for the work of ministry, whether near or far away, that like your servant Harriet Bedell, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, and by giving up ourselves to your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. The child's sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to her. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked along beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. And then his sister came to Pharaoh's daughter, saying, I shall, shall I go and get you a nurse? said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And when the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as a As for all the gods of the 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Christ. Christ. What does God hear? Or who does God hear? St. Basil in the 4th century said that when um, <clears throat> God says in Genesis, let there be light, we shouldn't imagine sound and vocal cords creating a sound, but that this is a way of articulating God's intention. St. Basil rejects a literal reading of the text. So we are left to wonder, does God make a sound? Does God hear a sound? The question is compounded by the fact that in all the rules for the priests in the Torah, um, all the rules for how they should offer the sacrifices in the temple, there are very little directions about what is to be said. In fact, almost Were the sacrifices offered in silence? What does God hear? And if the sacrifices were offered in silence, was that so that the people, or perhaps God, could hear the cries of the animals? What does God hear? We find ourselves challenged by our, uh, we find our assumptions challenged by the question, what does God hear? It was a common thing in the ancient world to believe that God, or the gods, listen to important or powerful people. Our texts challenge that assumption and make us ask the question, what does God The Egyptians have grown frightened of the Israelites, and they have them making books and slaving away at making or making bricks and have them. That was a Freudian slip on my part, wasn't it? They have them making bricks and slaving away at making bricks, and making a brick is like making a box, only it's not hollow inside. And so the Egyptians are slaving away at making this brick, these bricks, and straw or hay or papyrus shreds are put in the brick to help them hold their shape while the clay dries. Pharaoh says, throw all the male children into the Nile. Moses' mother has, gives birth to him, hides him for as long as she can, 
And then technically follows Pharaoh's rule. She puts Moses in the Nile. But she does so in a way that challenges and undoes Pharaoh's assumptions the way scriptures often challenge and undo our assumptions. And so she makes a box out of papyrus and reeds, lines it with bitumen, and we can't help but think of those bricks that everyone is slaving away to make. But this brick is hollow and has a baby inside. A baby who is cast into the Nile, just like Pharaoh said. He didn't say anything about boxes. So he's put in the river. And Pharaoh's daughter sees the basket, sees the box, and says to her servants, bring it over here. And she opens the box, and here's a baby crying. And it is that cry that is the beginning of the subversion of the entire Egyptian enterprise as concerns the Israelites. It all starts with that cry that turns everything on its head. Does God hear that baby God hears cries that the rest of the world would ignore, it seems. It makes us think of God hearing the cry of the blood of Abel in the ground, a cry that no one else heard. God hears this baby in this brick, in this basket, in the Nile, cry. And it starts a project, the undoing of Egypt and the liberation of the enslaved. It's a powerful message. Harriet Bedell hears a missionary speak and decides to go to Deacon school. She's motivated by the message of this missionary. God heard the missionary speak, and God heard Harriet's motivation, the inner call in deep in her soul to mission work. And she goes through school for a deaconess, and she's sent to Alaska, and she's stationed 40 miles from the Arctic Circle. And she goes out to some of the most isolated villages by dog sled. She, and through her God, hears the cry of people isolated in the snow. to God hearing them and responds to their cry. She becomes a well-known author in journals about mission and writes articles and tells stories and she gets asked to go to Miami to speak there and she's taken on a tour of the Mississippi Seminole Indians. I grew up around them. In, middle, in elementary school, I was taken on a tour to see the Mikasuki Seminole as well. And she felt they were put on display and that they lived in poverty. She heard their cry. And God She ends up spending 30 years with the Mississippi Seminole, working with them to promote health and education, to promote as much self-reliance as possible. 
She got them back in touch with their own creative arts, their, their weaving and their creation of baskets and other things. She got New York department stores to buy from them so that they could make a living. And then like Pharaoh in Egypt, the department stores realized they could get non-authentic Indian-looking goods to sell in their home wares department cheaper and make more money. And like Moses before Pharaoh, Deacon is Harry Bedell got on the plane and flew to New York and walked into the board of directors and confronted them on how they were treating the Mississippi Seminole. This was in the 50s and the 40s when women weren't in those spaces usually. But Harry Bedell was, and she was affected because she was hearing what God hears, which is not the voice of the powerful, but the cries of the oppressed. We're asked to give serious thought in the Beatitudes by Jesus to what God values, to what God to what God takes notice of. All of the people mentioned in the Beatitudes are people who are disregarded by Roman society, who are considered at the bottom of the social ladder, or at least those people you don't want to invite to a dinner party or have around you. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness, are you not the best guest at a meal with other powerful people? Probably startling, like Harriet in the boardroom. These people who are called blessed are people that no one in society would have thought would be the people to whom God would listen. And Jesus calls them blessed, implying that God hears them. Because God hears the blessed. It's a powerful statement, a startling statement that turns first century Roman society as much upside down as the cry of the baby Moses in a basket in the river Nile started the process of turning Egypt upside down. Because what God listens to challenges our assumptions challenges the way our world works, invites us into new possibilities. It's said that people at diocesan convention in the Diocese of South Florida, when they saw Deaconess Bedell walking down the hallway, would head the other way because they knew if they encountered her, they would end up with a job to do. She believed in responding to what God is listening to, and she believed it was the duty of Christians to so respond. And she called everyone to it, whether it's the little seminal girl in the pictures on our handout, or the bishop of Southeast Florida, or the boardroom of the Collier Corporation, or the boardrooms in New York. She called everyone to respond, to pay attention to what God is listening to. Hopefully we can do the same.
may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression and that we may reverently use our freedom. Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth and creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word, existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. From the night he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We now obey your Son's command. We call his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for your service in the world. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of blessed Mary the God-bearer, the apostles and prophets, and all our brothers and sisters, living and departed, through Jesus Christ our Lord, through who? with him, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.